Well, another twist and turn in the craziest football season any of us can remember. Why should <laughs> LSU lose its number one on their home field to an unranked team? That's been the pattern all season long. Both Tiger losses by triple overtime. Five of the last seven games decided yeah. by the last play. And finally, that charmed existence exactly. for the Tigers finally ran out. Well, LSU was living on the edge the entire thing. The offense keep bailing them out. And as I said before, their Achilles heel, and I'll say it again, was a red zone defense. And they gave up again. Touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. He couldn't stop anybody. They deserve to lose this ball game. It was I think Arkansas wanted it more than they did. Yeah, they sure looked like it throughout this Didn't football it? game. A couple things that, that I recognize watching this football game. I know Tim Tebow coming into the weekend was the Heisman Trophy front runner by most people's estimations. I think you've got another example of Darren McFadden, who in my opinion, pound for pound, is the most talented player in college football, and he may have won the Heisman Trophy today against LSU. The other thing that I saw today is Houston Nutt. For everything that Houston Nutt has been through, off the field, on the field. He's leaving Arkansas. He's staying. What a job in preparing his team to go out and take it to LSU. And Matt Flynn, I know he lost a game. Kid played his heart out. Could not have had a more horrendous yeah. start. And the way he played in the fourth quarter and in overtime oh. was amazing. Yeah. And speaking of coaches and speculation, of course, the talk in the bio will be, oh, well, Les Miles was distracted yeah. by all the Michigan yeah. talk, didn't have his team ready. They're very tough down there, and things could turn around quickly. Yeah. They loved him yesterday. Uh, tonight, maybe uh, not so much. Talking about two number one teams losing on their home Home field in November. That had not happened in 17 years. But Ohio State, despite that home loss, is still very much in the mix. West Virginia and the Buckeyes, the big winners in this outcome this afternoon, plus, of course, the winner in the game tomorrow night behind us here. Well, West Virginia's got Connecticut and Pittsburgh, and I think they're good enough to win both. Now, there's a lot of pressure on West Virginia. Yeah. If they can come through, through, they're in that. One of them teams in yeah. there, anyhow. Yeah, as crazy as all this BCS is, for those of you who don't quite understand the computers and all this that goes into it, it's pretty simplified, actually. The winner in this game Saturday night controls their own destiny to get to the championship. And as Lee just said, West Virginia, yeah. you're two games away, Morgantown, from having an opportunity to get to New Orleans and get to the national championship. And if one of those two slip up, there's Ohio State slip, sitting right there, kind of a stealth in bomber, clubhouse. in the clubhouse, <laughs> waiting, waiting to move in there. They play, they I don't disagree, but in, in the BCS era, do you ever truly control oh, your own no, destiny? No, you always got to impress the polls. Yeah. Style right, points are right. still important. Right. Yeah. Kansas, Missouri, it's the game of the century around here. That's just it. got even bigger 